we have been building this autocomplete text box component using React. This is where we're at at the moment. Although it works functionally, it is completely unstyled. In this video, I'll show you how to style this React component using CSS. There are a number of ways to handle CSS in React. Today, I'm going to show you the simplest. You see here we have our app.css file. This came with create react app. And then if we go into our components, our app components JavaScript file, we import it just like we would a JavaScript module, not forgetting to add the .css extension. This part's very important. Now, looking in the browser and viewing the source, we go into the head section and we scroll down a bit and there's this style tag here, and within it we see the contents of app.css. What's happening here is that Create React App has set up a Webpack loader for us. Webpack is a commonly used JavaScript build tool. Anyway, this loader is intercepting imports of files based on the .css extension. It is then adding code to add a style tag into the web page using JavaScript and putting the contents of all the imported CSS files in here. That's what happened with app.css. So let's add our own CSS file. So we add a new file for our CSS, autocompletetext.css. Within that, we're going to add a class, autocomplete text. For now, we're just going to put a width of 100% on it. Next, we go to our component. And we need to import autocomplete text.css. Remember the .css extension. This now ensures that the CSS we wrote shows up in the head of the document just like with app.css. We can now apply the class we added to a React element, so we're going to apply it to the wrapper div. Now, one thing to note, this is very important, in JSX, you can't just use the class attribute because it's a reserved word in JavaScript, so you can't put just that. Instead, we have to use class name, uppercase on n, but this acts just like the class attribute in HTML, so we add our autocomplete text class in there. Let's check that in the browser. So we can go to the head and we can see the style has been added there. Looking at the finished product, we can work out what we need to do in terms of styling. Firstly, let's take the width. Since this is a reusable component, we want a flexible width. I think the best way to achieve this is to make everything 100% width. Then, when someone uses the component, they can put in a fixed width container in order to dictate the final width of the component. Now let's look at the border. So we have a grey border with a drop shadow. My first thought was to put a border around both the text input and the UL that appears with the suggestions. The main problem with this is that if we put a border and drop shadow on both elements, they would overlap at the bottom of the text input and the top of the UL. The simplest solution is just that the container div has a border and a drop shadow, while the UL and text have none. This way, when just the text box is shown, the border wraps that. When the suggestion list is also shown, it wraps both components. So let's make those changes now. The width of our container is already 100%. So let's add a new selector for the text input and give that a width of 100% too. We then add a gray border to our container. And then we want a drop shadow on it too, so we add some code from that. Now, I just generated this with an online tool. You can Google CSS box shadow generator and you'll find a similar tool. And we take off the border from the input. So we're going to go into our app component now. And we're going to wrap the text box in a div with the class name of app-component. hyphen 
Then we go back to app.css and we do a selector for app-component as a class. And we're going to put some margin on the top of it because we just want a bit of space between the top of the browser and the component. And then the margin at the sides is going to be auto to center it. And we give it a width of 600 pixels. This is to constrain the size of our reusable component from outside of the component. So once we finish that, we'll save and have a look in the browser. Taking a look at this, we see that the text in the list is centered. We want it left aligned. Also, we want to get rid of those bullet points. Let's do that now. So I'm just going to give the entire div and also the input a consistent text style so they just look the same. I'm now going to put in a new selector for the UL. And with list style type set to none, I get rid of the bullets and I align the text to the left. If we have a look at our elements, um, we can see the alignment is a bit off between the text input and the list. And there's this funny thing going on with the right hand side of the text box. Um, there's a couple of things going on here. We need to use border box box sizing on it, otherwise the text input can end up being more than 100% width of its parent. Both the text input and the list items should also have consistent padding. Finally, there's also a small, you probably can't see it, but there is a small gap between the top of the UL and the bottom of the text input that throws things off just a little bit. This is caused by the new line between the two in the markup. This can be fixed by using the before pseudo selector. First, we'll take away all the margin and padding on the UL elements. We won't be needing that. Then we're going to add a consistent margin and padding to both the LI and text input. So we add a new selector for the LI, put the padding in there, and then put the same padding on the text input. And we need to also add to that box sizing and set it to border box for the text input so it doesn't get more than 100% in width. Finally, we're going to add a pseudo selector for our UL. This is the before pseudo selector we're going to use. And it just allows us to remove the white space before the UL. Um, so we're going to set the content to be an empty string. I also want to remove this blue highlighting when the text box is in focus. This is very simple to do. We just add outline none to the text input. Things are looking really pretty good now. We actually do want a border at the top of the UL though, just to separate it from the text input. We also want to make the list of items look clickable. Um, we can do this by adding a cursor style and some hover styling to the UIs. So we add a border to the top of the UL. That's of course one pixel solid gray. And we set cursor to pointer on the LI so that the cursor has a little hand on hover. So it looks like a link, something we can click. Then we're going to add a new selector and we're gonna use the hover pseudo selector on the LI selector. And then on hovered, we're going to give all the allies a background, just sort of a light gray background and an underline to emphasize this to the user, just to emphasize that they're selectable. So yeah, that all looks really good. Um, but there is a final part to this, a fourth part to this video series. At the moment, the list of suggested items is hard-coded into the component. In order for the component to be reusable, it also needs to be configurable. We do this using something in React called props. Learning about props is vital to knowing React, so join me next time when I show you how to use props to make the suggested items list configurable. I have new videos going out regular as clockwork every Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday at 9am Eastern Time. Click that subscribe button now and don't miss them.